As the Chinese New Year approaches, the government's debt is causing hardship for migrant workers. As the end of the year approaches, contractors and migrant workers find themselves in dire straits, often facing repression or threats as they seek to recover overdue project funds and wages. Lei Ming, a contractor from Jiangsu Province, revealed the dire situation faced by many who have undertaken government projects, resulting in financial ruin. This predicament stems from rampant corruption among local government officials and their lack of integrity, leading to prolonged delays in releasing project funds. Contractors and subcontractors are burdened with heavy debts due to the need to finance projects up front. As the year end approaches, they not only fail to recover project funds but also face pressure from creditors. Lei Ming explained that in one project, even if business is not good, the local Communist Party secretary still demands millions of yuan annually. Contractors like Lei Ming are left with only a fraction of their earnings, while their owed project funds are withheld, and they are forbidden from speaking out. Many have resorted to borrowing large sums from banks, only to have their properties and assets seized. Lei Ming recounted his involvement in a project to renovate shanty towns in Su Prefecture, where out of 36 buildings planned, only 12 were completed due to the county government's failure to provide funding. Attempts to demand payment from the county government were met with repression. After four years, with no payment received, half of the project remains unfinished. Lei Ming, along with hundreds of other small contractors and thousands of workers, faces continual struggles to claim their wages, often encountering arrest before reaching the county government office. The tightening grip of authorities prevents them from even carrying mobile phones or taking photos, with frequent summons to the police station for interrogation. Mr. Guo, a migrant worker from Fujian province, expressed that dozens of workers have had their wages withheld and faced threats when demanding payment. With local government departments failing to take action, many workers have no choice but to return home early. They plan to only work as daily wage laborers in the future. Mr. Gua stated, the houses in our unit are being renovated, and the contract was given to a third party. However, the third party did not pay our wages, claiming that they were instructed by the government to do so. We reported to the police and sought assistance from the street office, the court, and labor supervision, but no one has taken any action. We feel helpless. Mr. Liang, an employee of China Railway, revealed that it's common practice within state-owned enterprises like China Railway to delay payments for construction projects and other expenses. Despite being a publicly traded company, its financial reports are often embellished, masking the fact that it consistently operates at a loss. Mr. Liang stated, when we build railways and roads, it's considered a political task, so delayed payments are frequent. Arrears in materials, labor fees, and subcontractor payments are widespread. It's common for subcontractors to be owed money, and it's not unusual for us to go several months without receiving our wages. As the Chinese New Year approaches, protests and wage disputes by workers are occurring daily across the country. On February 6, 2024, in Zhangjiang Town, Guigong City, the Hakka Impression City owed wages to 130 migrant workers. Despite petitioning efforts to the Guigong Petition Bureau, they were unsuccessful in obtaining their overdue salaries. Similarly, on February 5, 2024, in Huanghua City, Hebei Province, workers at Hebei Jinbang New Materials Company, Limited, involved in projects related to 80,000 tons of annual epoxy resin production and 200,000 tons of annual potassium sulfate production, blocked entrances, and demanded overdue wages. Meanwhile, a large number of small and micro-enterprises are closing down, exacerbating the already difficult situation for laborers. The unhealthy state of China's small and micro-enterprises is affecting the employment of 180 million people. The Chinese economy continues to decline, with a recent survey by the Renmin University of China indicating that more than one-third of small and micro-enterprises are financially unhealthy, facing numerous risks that could impact the employment prospects of 180 million people. 
the China Inclusive Finance Research Institute, Kofi, of Renmin University conducted a study titled Financial Health of Small and Microenterprises, based on 2,349 questionnaires, and recently released the report on the financial health of small and microenterprises. The report highlights the need for particular attention to be paid to small and microenterprises in regions such as Hunan and Shanxi, where the proportion of financially unhealthy enterprises is relatively high. In Guangxi and Chongqing, there is a phenomenon of polarization in the financial health of small and microenterprises. Examining the time of establishment of enterprises, those established for three to five years and over eight years tend to have poorer financial health, warranting focused attention. In terms of daily financial management, the issue of overdue accounts receivable is particularly severe for small and micro enterprises, leading to significant pressure on cash flow that requires special attention. Within the very unhealthy category, approximately 80 peccant of small and micro enterprises are unable to recover accounts receivable on time. The Chinese economy is in a mess, with various waves of unemployment erupting, and homeowners facing foreclosure are forced to leave their homes and end up on the streets. This morning, our neighbor's house was foreclosed by the court just because they missed last month's mortgage payment. The court forced them to move out, and the couple, with two young children, one in elementary school and the other just starting kindergarten, were seen packing up their belongings. The family of four, with the wife wiping away tears as she packed, and the husband standing nearby with a pale face, appeared distressed. The two children, unaware of what was happening, were happily playing in the corridor. It's really hard to imagine how they will manage to get by in the future. It might even lead to divorce, I in fact, I've already handled hundreds of foreclosed properties in Shenzhen and have seen nearly a hundred broken families. But even so, this situation still feels incredibly painful, like something is blocking my heart. So, I sincerely advise everyone that if you don't have much money on hand and your income is unstable, be cautious about buying a house. Nowadays, many people buy houses like they buy cell phones. If a couple's combined monthly income is just over 10,000, they dare to buy a house with a monthly mortgage payment of over 10000 My goodness! This kind of home buying behavior is simply suicidal. Buying a house now is completely different from before. In the past, you could buy a house with your eyes closed and still make a profit from rising prices. But now, houses have returned to being primarily for living and improving quality of life. Comfortable and affordable amenities are the top priority. Just make sure the size is adequate. To be honest, what's the scariest thing about living in Shenzhen? It's not having money. Everything requires money, food, children's education, even flushing the toilet. Even if you don't eat or drink, you still have to pay property management fees every month. If one day you can't afford to repay your mortgage, the bank will sell your house at a discount or even auction it off at 56 peccant of its value. In the end, we'll be responsible for selling your foreclosed property. I truly hope there were no foreclosed homes in this world, but by the time it reaches us, it's already out of our hands. Recently, there have been more and more foreclosed properties in Shenzhen, and tragedies like this happen every day. I sincerely hope you won't be one of them. College students working two shifts for six yuan an hour, only to end up not getting paid at all, has really pushed the limits of understanding. Yesterday, I went for interviews for three jobs, and my goodness, I couldn't believe how low the wages they offered were. It felt like a blatant violation of labor laws. The first job interview I went to was at Luke King Coffee. I had asked them in advance on WeChat about the wage, and for the first 15 days, it's 8 yuan per hour. Can you believe there are people getting paid even less than us at this Luke King Coffee branch? So, for the first 15 days, it's 8 yuan per hour, and if you pass the barista certification, it's 15 yuan per hour for the next 15 days. If you don't pass, it's 12 yuan per hour. Basically, it's around 2,000 yuan for the first month, 2,700 yuan for the second month, and from the third month onwards, it's just base pay plus performance incentives. Then I thought about it and went for an interview at another place, a convenience store. When I asked about the wage and working hours, they said they pay by the day, 60 yuan for a shift, and a shift is 9 hours long. 
Plus, the morning shift starts at 7 o'clock. I haven't woken up at 7 o'clock since I was preparing for the postgraduate entrance exam. And now, just for 60 yuan, I have to start work at 7 in the morning, which means I have to get up at 6. It's outrageous. Even though at this convenience store, all you have to do is handle cash and accounts, and you can use your phone or study, but think about it, 60 yuan a day, if I work for a full 30 days, I'll only make 1,800 yuan, just 1,800 yuan. And who would wake up at 6 in the morning to go to work for 6 yuan per hour? The current situation in the freight market is dire, with many truck drivers unable to afford meals anymore. Many long-haul truck drivers can no longer afford to eat. You may not believe it if you're not in this industry, but it's the harsh reality. Unconsciously, I've been stranded here for four days without any work. And it's snowing again. Every morning, I buy a pastry to eat, and for lunch, I get a fast food meal from the cafeteria here, which costs about 15 yuan each. The same goes for the afternoon, another 15 yuan meal. So, in total, I spend about 36 to 37 yuan a day here. I'm not bragging about it. But many drivers can't even afford to eat. I have a few fellow drivers here, and when I offer to buy them meals, they refuse. They say they can just cook an egg in their truck. By noon, when I offer them food again, they say they can just boil a few eggs. I've been trying to treat them for days, but they feel embarrassed to accept. So, I've stopped inviting them to eat with me. Anyway, we're all stuck in our trucks, looking for cargo on our phones. It didn't used to be like this. When I first started driving, no matter how far, I would find a hotel or inn to stay. Now, most of us just stay in our trucks. Even though I'm in my truck, I still need to eat. Usually, if there's a restaurant nearby, I'll try to eat there for all three meals. But I don't know when it started, even if there's a restaurant, many drivers are afraid to go. They just cook instant noodles or boil some eggs in their trucks. They all say, saving money is still money. I may not have reached that point yet, but if I keep living like this, I think one day, I'll end up like them, cooking meals in my truck. It's really tough. People from all walks of life are struggling, without seeing any signs of improvement or hope. This is the current situation for ordinary people in China.